Welcome back to Tranquility Du Jour, nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. This is episode 536. I'm your host, Kimberly Wilson, bringing you tranquility since 2005 through this medium. Today, I wanted to talk to you about 10 journal prompts that I thought might be helpful as we navigate this time. Okay, so this is coming at you. April 2021, we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel with regard to the pandemic. I know we are still in the middle of it, right? Or in the midst of it pretty intensely and um, other countries particularly so. And um, so I know this is definitely not the end, but there is like, I feel like a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and a little hope. And so with that, I wanted to give you some prompts that I've created over the past few weeks of leading a variety of live events. So we had, of course, TDJ Live that we kicked off at the launch of spring. And then I had the virtual retreat a couple of weeks ago. And I also hosted an uh, an event for a nonprofit, you know, of just really looking at how do we spend a bit of time in reflection on where we are right now in this season of bloom, right? If we think about spring, which is what we're in here in the uh, DC area filled with pops of color and cherry blossoms and so much goodness with regard to springtime. Birds chirping, just saw deer running through, you know, it's just like this um, time of the year is so much about kind of this rebirth. And so with that, I think it's really lovely to hit the pause button and do a bit of reflection. And I really like the questions that I've pulled together from these various events that I thought you too may find helpful. And if you were at these events, these are going to sound familiar to you. If you were not, my hope is that these will be uh, a good dose of inspiration as you move forward. Now, before we dive in, I wanted to share a few things that are coming up and around the corner. One is um, the TDJ Lifestyle e-course. So this is my five-week course where we dive into the five tenets of TDJ, wellness, mindfulness, creativity, style, and compassion. And if you're interested in this, join the wait list. There's a link in the show notes, which can be found at KimberlyWilson.com slash 536. Also, our next TDJ Live is June 20th. I can't believe June 20th. I mean, it's like (laughs) right around the corner. And yet I feel like we just got into spring. Um, And it's just it happens to fall on Father's Day. But a reminder with the TDJ Live Masterclass that it's a live event that's free. And then if you miss it, no worries. The replay is available for $10. And that benefits Pigs and Pugs Project, which is a nonprofit. And we work to make the lives of pigs and pugs happier and healthier and with pig sanctuaries and pug rescues. And last but not least, July 10th is our next virtual retreat. And that's all about mid-year reflection. So right now we're reflecting on really like Q1, right? So this will be the first half of the year. And it's a really, really sweet experience. So we'd love to have you. Registration open soon for, soon for that. And you can find out more again at KimberlyWilson.com. All right. So what are the 10 prompts that my hope is will help get you kind of in the spirit of spring and also thinking about, you know, a sense really of spring cleaning and making space and tuning in and finding clarity and a bit of self-awareness. This stuff is not easy because I feel like to hit the pause button and really kind of check in with ourselves, A, it's vulnerable. B, it's time consuming, right? Because we're, you know, we can go on autopilot and do, do, do. And so to actually take the step back and look, can be challenging. So I just want to acknowledge that and encourage you to be gentle with yourself as you do some exploration. I also encourage you to grab a pen and paper or um, markers or, you know, a sketchbook, whatever it is that might be helpful. And a reminder that you can find these prompts in case you miss anything or you want to go back um, again at KimberlyWilson.com slash 536. All right, so my first question for you is what is my spring intention? So what is it that you would like to see happen in spring? 
So you could think of by June 20th, right? So it might be that I want to slow down or I want to have a vegetable with every meal or I want to reach back out to so-and-so, right? So what is an intention that you have for spring? Maybe that you want to bloom, that you want to show up fully. What is it? My second question for you is what are my Q1 highlights, right? So if you look back at January through March, what are your highlights? What are some things that happened? What are some experiences? What are some lessons learned? What are some things you noticed in nature or with your family or with your pets or with your plants that you or with yourself, right, that you would like to acknowledge and have gratitude for, or just even remember. Number three, what are my Q2 dreams, right? So as we look at April through June, what are some of your dreams for this time of the year? Is it that you want to return to dance or that you want to pick up watercolor or that you want to make sure that you are, you know, changing the sheets once a week? I mean, can be super duper basic or bigger, right? Or maybe it's planning a trip for the end of the year. What might it be? Q2 dreams. And number four, what does blooming into spring look or feel like to me? So there's a quote that's credited to Anais Nin that is just one of my favorites. And it says, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in the bud was more painful than the risk it took to bloom, right? I just love that. As you think of like playing small is more painful than the risk it took to play big, to bloom. So for you, what does blooming into spring look or feel like to you? Writing that out or doing a collage of it, or maybe it's a color, maybe it's a scent, a smell. As I was walking the dogs this weekend, there is a lilac tree or bush, I'm not sure what you would call it. It's a very big bush or a very small tree that is blooming on the corner of S and 19th. Those of you in the DC area, go see it. It's amazing. And it smells so divine. Actually, it is 19th and Swan. My apologies. If you show up at S, you'll be disappointed. So it's one block up. Anyway, it is amazing, right? So to me, like that is a feel of blooming into spring. Number five, how is my word or theme of the year unfolding? So for instance, mine was creativity with the hope of really devoting as much time and energy as possible to my memoir compilation, right? I have an amazingly three-quarter rough draft done. Well, I want to have a full rough draft done. And then, of course, being able to go in and tweak. So that has been my theme. And it's one of those things that was just good to remind myself of to get back into to make sure I am creating time and space for this. Now, what about you? Do you remember what your word or theme was? And does it still resonate or do you need a new one? Or maybe you're like, "Hmm, I want to have a word or theme of the season versus the year. Now, number six, here's where we're doing a little reflection around the pandemic. So what parts of my pandemic lifestyle do I want to keep as the world reopens? So maybe you had a ritual or a thought pattern or a practice, or your time at home, or a slower pace, or less travel, or less meeting up with people. And maybe you actually found that helpful. So asking yourself, what parts of your pandemic lifestyle over this past year do you want to keep as the world reopens? One thing my partner and I were talking about is the fact that we haven't been sick in well over a year, right? Wearing a mask is like, amazing. And it's kind of like, I think we'll always wear masks on on planes, even when this is all over, you know, or wear masks in, you know, uh, certain public settings. I mean, who knows, right? But just thinking about uh, and and hand hand sanitizing regularly, Um, you know, so what are some of the things also, you know, not filling up my calendar fully. So All these things can be really, really helpful as we look back over this past year and what is it that's worked 
and that we want to keep doing, even when the world reopens. Now, number seven is the opposite side of this, is what have I missed and what do I look forward to incorporating? Maybe it's better habits, new routine, connection with others, travel, in-person meetings, events such as concerts and the arts, like I cannot wait to get back to the Kennedy Center and see a live ballet or to go see live jazz again, right? Or to travel. I've booked a flight to visit family in Oklahoma now that I will be fully vaccinated by that time. And absolutely delighted to be back on an airplane and be back in Oklahoma. So, for you, you know, whenever I, I mentioned the, the idea of better habits, you know, it might be even moving more. You know, I read that the average weight gain during the pandemic is like 29 pounds. And, and for, I think, 10%, it was over 50 pounds, right, during this. If you think about all the stress we've been under, the change in lifestyle, the sedentary lifestyle, right, for many people, you know, not commuting, not leaving the house, not walking in the same way. It's definitely taken a toll on our health. And so for you, you know, what might be some habits or new routines or, you know, time with friends or family that you've missed that you look forward to getting back into your life and incorporating? I've heard some people say, I cannot wait to get back to the gym, which, you know, I think probably beforehand, you know, took gym for granted and really didn't want to go to the gym. And now it's like, I can't wait to go back. Um You know, and I have to say what was interesting whenever I did this during the virtual retreat, as I was writing this, and again, it was quickly because we didn't have a ton of time for each of these prompts because we cover so much in a virtual retreat, I did find that I was surprised that what parts of my pandemic lifestyle I wanted to keep, there was more on there than what I had missed. Now, granted, it was a few minutes with each prompt, so maybe if I sat down and thought about it more, it would be different, but that surprised me because I think, you know, it's, um, we're so apt to looking at what's lacking or what's missing and, and, um, and missing that and, of course, making a list of that. And I just found there was more that I, I actually appreciated um, about the pause in lifestyle during that time. Granted, it's been incredibly traumatic on multiple levels from all the racial justice issues, the social justice issues, the deaths, right? I mean, oh my gosh, the lockdowns, the loss of businesses. I mean, there's just so, so much. And yet it's been this interesting eye-opening kind of look at what's life like when so much is taken away? What's at the core? All right, number eight, where am I right now? And that's not so much like physical location as it is on the various levels of, say, your seasonal life review. Now, the seasonal life review, for those of you who have been to any of my events, you have done this, or if you have Year of Tranquility, it's on page 21, or if you have the day book, it's on page 55. Now, the Seasonal Life Review, it includes a variety of areas of our lives, and I encourage people to rate them on a scale of 1 to 10. Finances, wellness, home, dreams, creativity, career, relationships, style, self-care, and spirituality. So when I say, where are you right now? That's what I mean. Looking at these areas of your life. It can be those that I just named or others, other things that may resonate with you to just notice, where am I in my life right now? Is it working for me? Do I want to make any changes or any shifts? And again, without there being a right or wrong way to to be. And then number nine is, where do I want to be? Right? So maybe describing yourself by the start of summer. So an example would be today is June 20th. I'm feeling strong. I'm doing yoga and writing in my journal every morning, and I'm filled with energy. I'm eating lots of fruits and veggies and reconnecting with parts of myself that I put on hold during the pandemic, right? So that's just an example of like, where do I want to be? So if you picture yourself June 20th, or you picture yourself into the year, or you picture yourself a year from now, asking yourself, where do I want to be. And then my last question for you around these prompts is number 10, to bring more balance to my seasonal life review, 
Again, that's page 21 of Year of Tranquility or 55 of TDJ Daybook. Or if you've joined any of the TDJ Lives or virtual retreats, it's in your workbook. What small steps do I need to take? So to bring more balance. And you know, one thing that comes up for me with that is home. So I found that during the pandemic, I bought a lot of candles, which are consumables. So you go through them, right? So that doesn't add a lot of bulk. Um, I bought a lot of facial serums, which um, again, you go through, they're consumable, doesn't necessarily add a bulk, bunch of bulk. Um, books, those are consumables. Um, yes, and I did buy a lot on Kindle, um, probably three quarters of them on Kindle. But the additional ones I bought need a home in my house and they need space and there's not a ton of space. And then the last thing is a bunch of like these powders, right? These various like vegan collagen powders and um, uh, this anti-stress powder that has magnesium in it that's supposed to be great for migraines or these eight greens, which has all these greens in it. And it's a tablet. It's my favorite thing in the morning. So uh, again, lots of those. Those again are consumables, right? So the good thing is, is the things that I indulged in a little bit during the pandemic are consumables, but I still feel like at my home, like the walls are closing in on me and I want to do some massive decluttering and yet I'm a bit stuck, right? So because I'm attached to all of it. I, I think I sound a bit like a hoarder. So anyway, um, what is it that I can do What are some small steps that I can take to uh, get through this, right? To determine that even though, you know, I've been on a bit of a a binge with some of these things, they've been completely consumable. So they aren't like I'm accumulating things that need space per se, because I go through them. Um, But what small steps can I take to just feel like there's more spaciousness in my home? So that's something that I want to look at and do some thinking around and, you know, continued kind of decluttering and, you know, after the TDJ style pop up, which hopefully you guys have been able to see. And if not, it's over on YouTube, the YouTube Tranquility to Shore channel. I went through my closet because I was like, you know, I'm encouraging other people to do it. It's been a while. Let me do it. And I got a bag together for my seamstress. I tend to give her a lot of um, clothing that she likes or then she passes along to her nieces. And um, also a box of uh, clothing like previously worn TDJ clothing that I either had duplicates of or I wasn't wearing anymore. And I sent it to a friend in New York who always loves receiving these little care packages. And so, you know, that's like, I don't know, maybe 25 garments, right, that will now have a new home. So little things like that can make a difference. So as you think about how to bring more balance to your seasonal life review, what small steps can you take? So in closing, I wanted to share with you a poem from one of our two books. I chose two books as books of the month for our online book club. It's The She Book by Tanya Merkel and What Kind of Woman by Kate Bear. So these are both really thin. Like how many pages are in each of these? Like 130, right? So they're small books and um, of poetry. And I just thought that they were Uh, different, right? Because I haven't chosen poetry before. And also would just allow us, you know, the chance to kind of like get off the self-help kick, although I love, love, love it. And I'm obsessed and read tons of self-help books. I also just thought, you know, something to use our brain differently. And so I wanted to read to you on page 53, and the poem is titled 53, a poem from the She Book. There's a time for cord cutting, letting go, and breaking free. There's a time for shape shifting, evolving, and time traveling. There's a time for forgiveness, stillness, and empathy. There's a time for heart mending, strength building, and surviving. There's a time for waking wild, moon bathing, and being messy. There's a time for just letting you be you and what will be, be. The She Book by Tanya Merkel. So if you're interested in reading along with us, you can find um, the pinned post over at the TDJ, Tranquil Du Jour Insiders Facebook group. There's a link to that in the show notes. I also, of course, have a blog post where I announce it, the new book at the beginning of every month. So you can find that on the blog. 
KimberlyWilson.com slash blog and the Insiders Facebook group. And I encourage you to share uh, what comes up for you around these books. What do you like? What doesn't resonate? What doesn't work? What are you taking away from them? And I hope that you find them to be inspiring because they're, I put a lot of time into which book should I choose? What will people like? What will resonate? What kind of goes along with the season? Uh, what's new? Uh, things along those lines. So I hope that it's uh, a fun way for you to read along also. And get those books read, right? Because Goodreads this year, I'm like 48, which is the highest I've ever done. It's usually I strive for two books a month and now I'm pushing for four. So the good news is these poetry books are thin, ladies. So if you would like to um, read them, you get two added to your reading challenge and, um, you know, and they're freaking amazing. (laughs) No big deal. Uh, receive weekly inbox love through Love Notes. If you haven't yet signed up for those, would love to send you a little dose of love every week. And they include invites, inspiration, and more, and sometimes fun Spotify playlists. Um, There's also a link to browse my six books and planner. And if you have a moment to pen a review of any of my books on Amazon or Goodreads, I'd be so, so happy. It means a lot to authors. And also you can find me, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, if you have a moment to hit the uh, five-star button, hopefully on your podcast app, uh, hit subscribe and or leave a review would be so, so grateful. So as always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Um, Lots of fun podcasts uh, lined up for you over the next few months. And um, and this week, I actually on Friday am interviewing five new guests. So lots of good things coming your way this summer and fall. So thanks for being here. And um, I adore you. And I think you're amazing. And I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a note. Hello at KimberlyWilson.com. Thank you and namaste.